right, welcome back to the Nice Fast channel, guys. Say hello to Ren, Stimpy, Powder Toast Man, Log and TV, and let's get started. And if you guys are not subscribed to the Nice, oh, look at this attire. Woo. Okay, fine. Uh, please consider doing so. We have a lot of fun. Hit that subscribe. Hit that uh, notification bell. And let's get started with this knife. Now, this is the B and B knives, Buck and Bear knives. Um, and this is the diesel. There's the number. Uh, let's see. I wanted to see if it said diesel somewhere and it doesn't. Uh, so this is, um, an interesting one, guys. These guys reached out to me. They're a company that's based in Phil in Pennsylvania, not Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania. And, um, they're based in Pennsylvania, but the knives are apparently made overseas. Uh, it sounds like Pakistan is the place. Um, and they reached out to me and asked if I would check out one of their knives and review it. There we go. Trying to adjust the camera here a little bit. There we go. Um, and I said, sure. So I looked at on their website. And by the way, they reached out to a bunch of different channels. And some said yes and some said no. Uh, here's the thing, guys. I just want to tell you this. I review knives often uh, one way or the other just so everybody can get a look at different brands and, and get an idea of if they're interested in something or not. If I only reviewed things that just stood out to me uh, and I went and looked at and, you know, then you'd never have a chance to to know whether you're interested in something that I may not review. Uh, so I'm gladly going to say yes to these companies. I did tell them they're going to get an, a very uh, honest review from me, and that's what you're about uh, to get. Um, so I picked out the diesel because I wanted a folding knife. They did have some really nice looking fixed blades, but guys, I'm just not into overseas Damascus. I don't, I mean, maybe that makes me a snob or something. I, I love fixed blades. You guys know I have a lot of them. Uh, most of their fixed blades are Damascus. Maybe I could have found something on there that wasn't, but most of their fixed blades are Damascus, and I really just wanted something that wasn't Damascus, was just a, a single blade steel. So I picked out this folder. You can see great jimping on the flipper tab there. Now, you do have uh, what I believe, let's see, let me just double check, um, is titanium over here. Uh, yes, so this is titanium. And then on this side, you have G10 and carbon fiber. Now, I'm not sure. Somebody asked me uh, after the unboxing and I'm alive, was this genuine carbon fiber or was it artificial or was it peel ply? Or what? I don't know, guys. I'm not smart enough to tell you what it is. It definitely looks like peel ply. It could be peel ply to me, but I am not sure uh, exactly. Somebody actually went as far to say it was fake carbon fiber in my, uh, in my uh, video. I, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't look fake to me, uh, but I just don't know carbon fiber all that well. So this is G10. I can feel that. It feels good. Um, the, the I will tell you that the finishing between the G10 and the carbon fiber is awesome. I mean, it is it is well done. It is smooth. The transitions are terrific. Uh, you have a lanyard uh, slot back here. You have a... Um, uh, what appears to be either a steel or maybe uh, that might be G10. Yeah, that's a G10 backspacer, I think. Not positive, but I think so. Does have some jimping on that as well. You do have a very deep, uh, a very not deep, excuse me, uh, pocket clip. That much is sticking out of your pocket. And I can tell you it does kind of poke at your arm when you're walking because a lot is sticking out. And it is right side only. So lefties, uh, no... Uh, no option for you there unless you carry it off pocket there. Um, an interesting clip. I didn't think I would like it, but it doesn't poke me. Uh, it goes in and out of the pocket fairly well. It carries fine. Uh, I just didn't know what I thought of this little um, upturn with the hole at the end. Uh, but yeah, in and out of the pocket. I'm just doing it again right now. It's pretty good. Again, it does kind of snag on your pocket just slightly at the beginning because it's pretty tight. But it, it you know, once it wears in, it it's fine. Uh, flat uh, pivot on this side, tooled pivot on this side, um, and again, really good. Now this is titanium on this side. Does not look like we have a lock bar interface or an over travel stop. Uh, it is probably carbonized. I do not know that. Let's just look and see. Yeah, it's going to be um, really hard for me to see that. Let's see. Yeah, I can't. I cannot tell, but that's my guess. I don't, like I said, I don't. Well, wait a minute. No, that's the detent ball. Okay, I got a little, 
a little hopeful for a second that there was an insert, but there's there's not an insert. Uh, it sure doesn't. Let's just, I keep wanting to, yeah. So I think the lock face is carbonized, if you look there. It's, it's, it's very possible. But um, again, uh, really interesting looking knife. It I mean, you know what? Even with people questioning this carbon fiber, I actually don't think it looks that bad. Uh, but, but it's, you know, it's interesting. Now these screws, because of the chamfering here, which is good in the hand, uh, do stick up a little bit. I wish they were rounded. You can see where they stick up. Uh, so when I open the knife and hold it, you know, I really don't feel them because it's a bigger knife. Um, but you know, some people might feel that now you do have this big, ridiculous, uh, blade you have. Uh, jumping up here on a landing spot, you have a, a spoon down here, landing area. You have jimping down here, and you have this almost gladius-style uh, recurve blade. Now, for me, this would be pretty difficult to sharpen, um, but, you know, it's it's interesting. Sometimes people buy knives uh, because they, they're interesting for them. Now, uh, I have carried this a few times, and I have done some cutting, but we're just going to show you this. Uh, it does cut, and it cuts very well. And it doesn't really matter whether I'm on that hump um, or if I'm down in the belly. Whoops. And now I said that, and now it's not going to cut down in the belly. There we go. So you can see, I mean, it. this is a very serviceable blade. Uh, no problems whatsoever in that category. Uh, it cuts very, very well. And it has a nice, sticky, sharp uh, edge. You do have a sharpening choil and the plunge is out of the way. Uh, very interesting grind. You got your B&B &B knives over here and your 14C28N. The reason I selected this knife, they had some D10, um, D2, they had some other steels. Uh, and I think, you know, 14C interested me a little more. You got your B&B &B logo there. Um, and again, you do have this jimping. It is rough. Uh, it, it's a little too big and far apart for me, um, but not, not terrible. And then again, I can get my thumb out here on this landing spot, or I can get my finger out here, which is the best way to use it. Uh, not bad. And you got a black stone wash, uh, finish. So let's talk about specs. Now this one, I'm reading it to you off of Amazon and it is $129 on Amazon. I don't have a code. I don't have anything like that. So the price is what it is. Um, and it's called the diesel 3.6 inch blade. Let's go back down here to the, oh, come on. Where are we? Uh, I have lost the specs now. They were just right here in front of me. Here we go. Uh, 3.6 inch blade, uh, 8.5 inches overall. Um, plenty of room. I'll show you the handle one more time in a second. 14 C Swedish steel, um, G10, uh, carbon fiber and titanium, and it weighs seven ounces. So it is a heavy one. There is no milling on the inside. Um, so it is a thick slab of titanium. And I just tried to cut myself and thankfully uh, I did nick myself a little bit. I don't know why I did that. I just flipped the knife over and nah, not too bad. Um, okay. So, uh, but you do have uh, these, these handle, these finger choils for your hand. And it actually feels really good in the hand. Um, everything is chamfered fairly well. You can see there, not bad at all. There are some 90 degrees, like right here on the edge of this G10, kind of grabs a little bit, but not too bad. Um, but there you go, guys. Pretty pretty good in that regard. Now, action-wise, um, I have not been able to fail it. This detent is very good. Can you hear that? Yeah, so good detent. It, um, by the way, stay off the lock bar because if you're on that lock bar, you are going to have trouble opening this one. Very much so. I, I don't have any problems with the uh, flipper tap. Grabs my finger real well. Again, stay off the lock bar. Uh, it does want to drop to your thumb and then one shake with that big, heavy 3.6 inch blade gets it home. Um, so, you know, not bad overall. Again, I know some of you are turned off A by the price is a little high. Uh, at one, uh, it should probably be sub or right around a hundred. Again, I don't know their max manufacturing costs. I don't know any of those things. Just when you compare with the market with 14 C now it is titanium. So I could see it maybe going a little high, um, higher, like 110, 115. So it's not far off. It's really not. Um, and again, 
it's up to you what you think about this carbon fiber. Uh, I'm not going to pass judgment on it. So overall, again, it was worth checking out. Uh, really, really interesting company. Uh, and I appreciate them reaching out to me and letting me take a look at the Buck and Bear Diesel. We're at 10 minutes, and this is the Knives Fast channel. So I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. If you have, oh, by the way, lock up. I forgot to talk about that. Uh, really good. And, uh, well, why'd I close it to do that? You're at 20 to 25. No lock, rock, no blade play. So, again, well done in that regard. And, yeah, centered. So, again, the Buck and Bear Diesel, you guys make your own. Again, I know a lot of you are going to hate the fact that that's not a deep carry clip. And it did bother me because it sticks out quite a bit. Um, but there you go, guys. Thanks so much for checking it out. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Do you have a Buck and Bear knife? Maybe one of their fixed blades. I know somebody said uh, in one of our vi one of my video my uh, unboxing video they had a Buck and Bear uh, fixed blade that they really dug. So let me know. And guys, thanks so much for watching the Knives Fast channel.